After learning the process of shading and applying it on a sphere and then a pair, in this lesson I'm going to show you how to apply this to a bell pepper drawing which is a much more complex subject. But as I said, even for a complex subject, the shading process is essentially the same. First, let's determine the angle of the light source, let's say top left, and imagine the planes that make up this form. All the planes that face the light will belong to the light family, and all the planes that face away from the light will belong to the shadow family. The most important part is to separate the shadow family from the light family. The goal is to clearly communicate what is light and what is shadow. I'd like to first of all determine the line of termination, which is a divider of two families, a darker strip at the edge of the shadow. So for this drawing, the light is coming from the upper left, which means that the lower right portion of the shape will be in shadow. In this drawing, the light is coming from this front left angle and is hitting on these top sections of the shape. First, I should mention that I'm using a 6B graphite pencil and for the first step, I'm going to determine the line of termination and I'm going to do it smoothly as usual. And dividing my shape into two different parts as light and shadow. These areas belong to the shadow family. Of course, there are more complex surfaces and planes all over the shape, but for the first step, I'm just going to keep it simple and shape these areas with an approximate number 3 value. And also these areas. I'm putting the same value in this section. I don't want to lose this line, so I'm just leaving a light string about there to separate these two planes. And I'll keep darkening this part of the bell pepper with the same number 3 value, which is the value of the reflected light as mentioned. And I'm leaving this part a bit lighter because it was lit a bit in my reference. I have some shadows here. And also on this part I have some darks. And probably on this side of the shape because it is on the opposite side of the light source. As I said, the light is coming from the top front angle, so this part is not totally in shadow. So I like to darken some parts of it. The back part of the shape is completely in shadow which is not visible to us from this angle. I'm going to just mark these areas to know that they belong to the shadow family. But later we're going to work on the planes and details we have within each of these separate parts. It's just a general shading process now. And this part is kind of blocking the light from hitting this lower section of the shade. So I'm just going to darken this part to show that there is a groove here. These details will bring your work into life. I'll continue this shadow all the way down till here but it will be narrower and lighter at the end and thicker at this part because obviously this front part facing the light is blocking the light more on the upper section. And of course we have more shadows on the other parts because as you know a bell pepper has some grooves on the body so each of these grooves must be indicated with darker values. So we're gonna have some shadows here again. This part is also blocking the light from hitting this part at the back, so let's put a soft shadow here. But first I'm going to define these edges by drawing a dark stroke here. I don't want to wipe out these borders and edges. Again, we'll get back to the number 3 value. And there's also a shadow area at the back of this plane which light can't reach, so this is why I'm putting some shadows here. And I'm putting some shadows again at this part to show the roundness of the shape at this section. 
So this is going to be the shadow and this part is going to be the light because it's facing the light due to the roundness of the shape. Some shadows here again. Pay attention that I'm using the side of my pencil to shade and I'm trying to put a soft consistent layer. Next I'm going to shade the cast shadow also with the same value but it's just for now we're going to work on the values later. So I'm just going to darken all the cast shadow area with the same number three value. We also have some shadows casted here. Now we just need to make this value a bit more consistent to have a consistent layer on the shadow parts at this stage. Except these areas because as I said, I don't want to lose the border between different surfaces. I'm going to make this part darker. This is not a core shadow. It's a shadow casted from this part. So I'm making it darker at this stage. Next, I'm going to darken the core shadow. This core shadow shouldn't be the same all the way down the form. In some part of the form, the core shadow will be thicker with a softer edge. And in some parts, it could be narrower with a sharp edge. So I'm going to just put the edge of the core shadow here. And I'm using very soft lines and a number four value, a little darker than the value of the reflected light. So once I have the shape of the core shadows, I'm going to darken the core shadows all with that approximate number four value. I can always go back and refine later, which you're going to see me do in just a few minutes. But right now I'm just going to separate the core shadow from the reflected light. The soft and shiny skin of this bell pepper is a good reflective source. This vegetable has a segmented body that can be easily divided and drawn. Okay, I've been drawing these core shadows and separating them from the reflected light always remember to leave a lighter string between these core shadows because we don't want to merge them we want to show different planes and we want to show the grooves so this part is going to be darker with a lighter edge i'm going to continue this core shadow which is wider at top and narrower as it gets closer to this part of the bell pepper And then I darken these planes I have at the bottom. This is my edge and I'm going to be really careful not to merge it. I want to have a clean edge here. I don't want to blend the shadows. I darken these edges to refine the shape borders from the cast shadow. So from this line down, it's going to be considered as the cast shadow area. Now the cast shadow is the one area of the drawing there. We're going to bring part of the shadow all the way to black. So I'm going to darken this edge here. This shadow occurs when there's an interaction between two forms. This form blocks the light from hitting the surface of the ground right here. It's called a cast shadow because it's cast by the form. Here I'm drawing pretty dark, but I'm not using the full weight of the pencil. I just want to get it started. And then bearing down on the tip of the pencil, I'm going to darken this to the darkest value I get from this pencil. I'm still using a 6B graphite pencil here, so we can work our way up to the darkest value which in this case is about number 5 to 6 value. Now you'll note that the edge of the cast shadow right underneath the shape is pretty hard edged, but as the cast shadow gets further from the shape, that edge can soften. The area underneath this shape will get less bounce light and so will be darker. That's an occlusion shadow. So keep the edge of the shape sharp and the edge going away very soft. 
we can always go back and refine these values. So I'm going to use a really dark value for the cast shadow and I'm going to use the tip of my pencil with the overhand grip to have a really sharp cast shadow around here. This value, which is darker from the reflected value, perfectly defines the edges of the shape from the ground it is placed on. So create a gradation for the cast shadow as you get away from the subject and feather out your strokes to make it look lighter as it gets further. Then after this, we need to work on our half tones. So the half tones appear as a gradation darkest near the core shadow and lightest at the center light because we're working on a round spherical shape, obviously. So I'm thinking about how these planes get lighter as they wrap around towards the light source. So for the center light, I'm going to start at the upper left and it's not quite going to be a number one value, but it's pretty bright. And as I get closer and closer to the line of termination, I'm going to see less and less light. So hopefully you can see this gradation here where the shape is brightest at the upper left. And as we go toward the line of termination, it's a little more dim. Now your goal at this stage is to maintain the division of light and shadow that we worked so hard to accomplish. This is critical that all of the darkest values are only found on the shadow side and our brightest values are only found on the lit side of the form. So we want to keep the values that we've established so far. But one point that is very important for you to know here and I choose bell pepper for this video precisely because of this point is that even though we use lighter values in the mid-tones, but to draw bell pepper or any other object, the important thing is that as you're trying to show the light and shadow of your subject with shading, you need to convey the color of the subject you're drawing at the same time. Bell pepper usually has a dark color, so we can't use light values to shade a dark shape. Each color in gray scale have a gray representative. So if we convert each color to gray, it has its own gray color code. That's why we should be able to use grays here that can show the dark green color of the bell pepper properly. I remember once as a student, my teacher gave us an exercise that we had to design from the things we could find around us at home any subject of our choice and we had to shade them to show the darkness of the color of that subject in grayscale using grays. I had chosen a red phone for my assignment and I had used very bright values in my drawing. My teacher asked me what color did you want to achieve by drawing this phone and I said red, a dark red and he said well you use very bright values to show the color red and the phone you drew looks like it could be a white phone in the real world, not a red one. And these shades are not suitable for this subject. Therefore, it is very important to pay attention to this rule. So even though we're working on our midtones here and we know that these parts belong to the light family, but still for the shapes and objects that have darker colors, we need to use dark values to achieve the appropriate darkness of the subject's color. But in any case, these half tones should be brighter than the shadows to distinguish them and show the difference between the light family and shadow family. In addition to color, there are other important factors that affect your choice of values, such as the material and type of the subject you're shading, the reflectiveness of the subject, the light source and the sharpness and softness of the light source, the location of the light source and whether you have several light sources or only one, the distance of the light source towards the shape. It is very important whether reflective objects are placed around your subject or not, but color and material is the ground your subject is placed on. So pay attention to all of these factors and keep it in mind and try not to use the values on the shadow family for the light family so the shadows end up being just as light as the half tones. Of course you don't need to obsess too much with these rules because this may lead into art block and I don't want this. So we continue shading in this way and add different planes to get the result we are aiming for. This stage is the refinement stage where we make our shadows darker layer by layer and fix the edges between the planes. We apply small details that we may have missed in the previous steps and bring our drawing to life at each stage to achieve the desired result. This step 
may take an hour, two hours, or even more depending on the complexity of your subject. So you have to apply these shades with patience. I will continue to refine the shadows and I'll come back in the next step. In this step, I determine the placement of my planes. The shadow family is well separated from the light family. Cast shadows, line of termination, core shadows, midtones, and highlights. And the small details that show us the texture of the subject are also established. The only thing we have to do is to merge and blend the layers a little. In some places, the difference between the planes should be more evident. And in some areas, the edges between these shadows should be more blended. I shade here with the sharp tip of my pencil again so that I can have a better coverage. The white tip of the pencil is suitable for general shading when you want to cover more ground and save more time. Therefore, if I want to do a general shading, I use the side of my pencil, which gives me more graphite. But when I want to work on the details and cover the paper's texture to have a more uniform shade, I prefer to do it with the sharp tip of my pencil. Sometimes the same thing can be done with harder pencils like HB, B or H because these pencils can cover the places that your 6B or 4B pencil missed. So far we have a line of termination, core shadow, reflected light, cast shadow, occlusion shadow, center light, half tones and highlights. So at this stage, we have all of the values we needed to shape this shape. You can see the transition from the core shadow to the reflected light is even softer than the transition from the lid side of the shape to the shadow side. The edge between the two surfaces should be slightly merged and softened in this part because I don't want to go from this amount of darkness to this value at once. So I have to make these values darker. These are parts of the refinement stage. We will continue work on the details. So to improve the sense of three-dimensionality even more, one thing you can do is to work on the environment the shape is in. I used to darken the environment in the last two tutorials, but in this one, I have this beautiful colored pencil, so I'm going to use my white colored pencil. I'm also going to use this white color on the highlights and some light areas on my drawing to unify the drawing. I think it's super crucial to include the background because that is what makes our form pop. It really brings it to life. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this tutorial and consider subscribing to my channel for more tutorials. See you soon in the next one. Bye.